environment diagrams can help us understand recursion. Let's take a look. So we'll start with a new example because the best way to understand recursion is through many, many examples. Let's compute the factorial of a number. So 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. N factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, yada, yada, yada. Or when mathematicians are feeling fancy, they say n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial. Recursion. Okay, let's write factorial. We'll call it fact. Uh, factorial of n. If n is 0, we return 1. That's just part of the definition of factorial, that 0 factorial is 1. 1 factorial is 1 times 0 factorial, which is also 1. Okay, this is our base case. If n is 0, we return 1. Otherwise, we return n times factorial of n minus 1. And then we'll compute 3 factorial. So this is the whole thing. Just like I said, what's n factorial? It's n times n minus 1 factorial. Except for in this one special case, when n is 0, we just return 1. So, the def statement creates a function. Fact is bound to that function in the global frame. And then we call fact on the number 3, which creates a new frame. The formal parameter n is bound to the argument 3. In this conditional statement, we first evaluate that expression. It is false. And so we execute the body of the else clause of this conditional statement. Okay, so we're going to return n times factorial of n minus 1. So this n and n minus 1 are evaluated in the current environment. So n is 3, n minus 1 is 2, which means we're going to call factorial on 2. And fact is in the global frame, which is accessible in the current environment. So, now we call fact on 2, which means that we execute the same body, but n means something different now. Now n means 2. 2 is still not 0, and so we end up at this line and compute n times fact n minus 1, where n is 2 and n minus 1 is 1. In order to complete that computation, we need to figure out what factorial of 1 is, and so we call factorial to do so. 1 is not 0, so we'd make one more call. Now we've called factorial when n is 0, so this is now true, and we return 1. We finally have a return value. All of these other calls to factorial have yet to return, because they have yet to figure out what the rest of their return expression e is evaluated to. Okay, so now we know that in the previous call, fact of 0 was 1, which means we can compute 1 times 1 is 1 as well. Now returning 1 from here, we can compute 2 times 1 is 2, and we can compute 3 times that return value of 2 is 6. And then we're finished. So what happened there? Well, we had a function definition and then we had a bunch of frames. There was even another one after this, and they eventually all had return values. But here we are in the middle of execution. We've called factorial three times. The same function was called multiple times, once from here and twice from there. But different frames kept track of the different arguments in each call. So first we called it on three, then we called it on two, then we called it on one what n evaluates 2 in an expression such as n times fact n minus 1 depends on the current environment. So we have the global environment, and then we have an environment for each call to fact, which means we have n bound to different things in these different frames, and we can see that as this computational process unfolds, n is bound to smaller and smaller values. Now the nice thing here is that the smaller values mean that there's less work to do. It's easier to compute one factorial than it is to compute two factorial. So each call to fact solves a simpler problem than the last because there is a smaller n until eventually we reach the base case. 
and then we're finished. So we can compare iteration to recursion. Now iteration can solve the same thing. Let's take a look. So I could have computed factorial in an entirely different way. So this computes factorial and, but it does it with a while statement. So it binds the name total, which will eventually be the thing that I return, to one. And then we're gonna multiply in all of the different terms of factorial. And k is going to keep track of what number we're going to multiply in next. So while k is still less than or equal to the n when we're computing n factorial, we rebind total to be total times k, and k to be k plus 1. So what's going on here? Well, first k is 1, which means that total still remains 1, and k is going to be bound to 2. And then we do it again, and total goes up to 2, and k goes up to 3. Let's watch it happen. So for factorial, using this iterative version, called on 3, we first bind n to 3, and we bind total and k to 1 respectively. And then, in this frame, we rebind total and k over and over again. So every time we execute this assignment statement, these two numbers get updated. We do it again. Now total is 2, and k, the next number to multiply in, is 3. We multiply in that 3 and total all the way up to 6. The next number we would multiply in is 4, except that 4 is not less than or equal to n is 3. So we're actually finished with total equal to 6. And we return that total. Now notice that instead of having multiple different frames, we just have one frame, and any values that we don't need anymore have just been discarded. So if we look at these two things side by side, it turns out that iteration is a special case of recursion. So anything that we can do iteratively, we can do recursively as well. And in this case, when we want to compute for factorial, we can use iterative control, just as we saw before, or we can use recursion. And we get quite different definitions of the same computation, because we're in fact computing this thing in different ways. So in math, if you wanted to write a mathematical expression that looked a lot like the computation that we're doing here, it might look like the product from 1 to n of k, because we're multiplying in each k, starting at 1 and then working our way up to n. Whereas another definition of n factorial is, well, it's 1 if n is 0, and otherwise it's n times n minus 1 factorial, which is what this computational process describes. So we got 1 if n is 0, and then we have the recursive call if n is anything else. Now one practical consequence is that uh, we have a different number of names in the iterative versus the recursive version. So in the iterative definition, we had to keep track of a lot of stuff ourselves. We had to keep track of the total and the k, and we needed the name fact iter, which just binds it to the function so that we can call this thing when we need to. Now the recursive version has fewer names. We only refer to n and the fact function. 